Hello everyone, today I'm sharing with you some patriotic wood DIYs. This video is also a part of a playlist I'm hosting with some of my awesome friends that I know you're gonna love. And we are giving away a Cricut Air Explore 2 to one lucky winner. Stay tuned for the details on how to win that awesome prize. For now, let's get started on the DIYs. I have this wonderful wood that my cousin brought to me that she had left over when they remodeled her house. She had a remodel in her bathroom and this was the wood that was behind her shower. And then I, of course I still have some of these spindles so I'm going to pick a few of these out that are all matching and we're going to paint them. Two red, two white, two blue. So I use the Marquee by DIY and Hey Sailor by DIY and I believe I used White Swan by DIY. I only had to do one coat of the red, one coat of the blue, and I had to do, I tried to do a coat of the white, a couple coats of the white, it just wasn't covering, so I ended up doing a coat of, I believe, maybe faded burlap and then did another coat of white on top, and that worked out better, so um, hindsight, I would have just done a darker coat on this brown and then done the white on top. And I would have gotten a lot better coverage. You can see that the coverage on this white is not that great. Then I took some white wax by DIY. And I'm just going to show you on one of these to save time. But I took um, a stencil brush and chippy brush. You could use any of those. And I just put it on there pretty heavy. And then I took an old piece of white soft cloth it's an old t-shirt I use in all my DIYs and I just wiped back however much I wanted to you can wipe back as much or as little as you want and with this one I tried to mix a little bit of the faded burlap paint into the clear wax and it didn't work real well for me so I um, I just did it but it didn't really do that much for me I'm going to paint these three little wooden stars white and then I'm going to take this piece of wood that I cut to the desired length that I want and I'm crossing my fingers to hope that when I drill a hole in this it doesn't split the wood and it did not. Now I'm going to use this wire that I got at either Home Depot or Lowe's and it comes with its own little cutter built in which is amazing and see if that will fit through that hole the way that I want it to and it does. So I'm just going to drill enough holes across the bottom there for however many spindles I have, which is six. I had pre-measured and marked where I wanted those holes, by the way. I wasn't just drilling those willy-nilly. Now that I've finished that, I'm going to drill some... I'm gonna, well, I'm going to lay these out how I want them. And I think they turned out so pretty. And my cousin suggested that I do these every other one upside down. And I really like the way that looks. But I was afraid if I tried to drill holes in that little thin end that it might not work so good. So I decided to use the thicker end and I'm going to drill a hole in each one of them. And I measured from the end so that I could get the hole in the same place on all of them. So all six of the spindles got holes drilled in the end. And now I'm going to attach them. This was a little bit tricky but once I got the hang of it it went pretty pretty easy. So I'm using that wire that I got. I'd had that in my stash for quite a while. I'd used it as a, at a vacation Bible school craft. So I had some left over. It's been in my stash and I just decided to use it for this project and it worked out great. So I'm just looping it through there and twisting it really good, making sure that the little twisted part stays on the back side. It will try to go through that hole and, and get on the front, but I kept them all on the back side and measuring to make sure they're not that they're all the same length. If they're not, you just twist or untwist that a little bit more to make them the same length. Now we're going to make a hanger. I took this heavier gauge wire that came in a similar roll as the other one and I took it, it was silver, I took it outside, I spray painted it with some brown and some copper spray paint to make it look like it was an old piece of wire. I wish I would have had some old baling wire um, but I didn't so we're just going to use this and it turns out good. So I'm just going to show you on one side, not both sides, because I want to, don't want this video to be super long, how I twisted that in. And if you have a better way to do it, 
just do it how you do it. I did mess up the paint a little bit when I was using the pliers on it, so I just took a little bit of paint and daubed it on there to fix it. Now these little wooden white stars that I got on Amazon, I'm just that I already painted white, I'm going to just glue them to this wood. This wood piece, I didn't do anything to it. I left it just like she brought it to me. I wiped it down with a cloth to get all the dust off of it. Other than that, I just left it like that. Nail holes and all. Now I'm going to flip it over because I don't want that wire to scratch my wall. I'm going to take a piece of this, um, you know, it's that muslin drop cloth that you use for painting. And I'm going to just, I cut a little strip and I'm just going to glue it down all the way across the bottom there. Focusing the glue right on those little wire pieces. And this is going to keep those wire pieces from slipping back through and having the twisted part come to the front. So I do that all the way across the bottom and then I cut a couple little squares to go on the back side of the hanger because we don't want that wire scratching up our wall and messing up the paint on our walls. I think this turned out so adorable. I love it. It's so vintage and patriotic and you'll have to let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Hey friends, I hope that you are enjoying this video as much as I enjoyed making it. My friend Sammy over at Unicorn Dust Designs is helping me co-host this playlist along with our amazing friends Emily from Wood, Wine, and Crafts, Brenda from Rustic Lace, Rustic and Lace DIY, and Sharon from Cozy Junk Studio. They are amazing creators. I know you're going to love their video, so be sure and click that playlist that's down in the description box below and watch their videos because you are going to want to listen in their video for the mystery question. We're all going to ask a mystery question and you have to leave the answer to that mystery question in the comments. And we are going to, on June the 10th, have the comment picker pick a comment and if you if that comment answered the question and all five of our videos then you are the winner we are going to con we are going to post the winner on our community tabs on that day at 7 p.m central standard time and we are also going to comment on the comment that you are the winner we will not be using Telegram, WhatsApp, any of those. We will not be asking you to contact us through any of those apps or any anything like that. Um, so look for us to comment on your comment or on our community tabs. Do not go through any of those scammers. Do not respond to any of those scammers, please. Unfortunately, we are only allowing U.S. residents to enter and you must be at least 18 years of age to win. So with that being said, good luck to all of you and let's get on with the DIYs. Our next DIY is not red, white, and blue, but it is still very patriotic. So I had this scrap piece of wood, I sanded it down, and I'm taking this mixture that I had left over from a previous project. It is layered chocolate by DIY paint, and I've mixed a little bit of crinoline in there. And so I'm just using it as a stain. I'm wiping it on or wiping it off. I feel a little bit like the Karate Kid. Wax on, wax off. <laughs> wipe it on and wipe it off. And it is a beautiful color in my opinion. I, lo I love it a lot. So this is what I did to the front, the sides, and the back. I'm going to use my heat tool to dry it. And then I found this free printable on the internet. All you have to do is use Google, put free printable, uh, sheet music, whatever song you want, and you will find a lot of people that have it on their websites. So I cut it down. I decided how big I wanted it. And then I started ripping it up so it looked a little worn and tattered and did that around all four edges and then I took the DIY dark and decrepit dust 
and I put a little bit in this little favor cup. I get these little favor cups at Dollar Tree. They come in really handy for all kinds of little projects to do paint in or dust or glitter. And then I'm just taking a dry paint brush, dry paint brush and just dusting it on the edges. And I'm doing it over the cup so it falls back in the cup if any of it falls off, which I didn't have a lot of it fall off. So I put it on here and look how pretty it's going to look. Now on the back of it, I am putting a nice layer of Mod Podge. This is on the back of the sheet music. When it's completely dry, I'm going to iron it down to our piece of wood with my little mini heat press. You can use an iron. Just make sure that you do not have the steam turned on. You do not want any steam. Now I'm taking the layered chocolate. You can see how it's a little bit darker than my original paint because I had added some crinoline to it. Uh, so I'm using the layered chocolate. I'm going to dry brush some on there. I'm going to actually use, I believe, cake batter. Yes, cake batter by DIY and just dry brush on there to give it a little dimension. I want it to have some aged look. And this is what it looked like when I got as much on there as I wanted. You And I actually even went over the paper a little bit with the paint. And now I'm just taking a, a piece of sandpaper on a sanding block and just sanding it in a few places. And now I did not get this on camera, but I used my amazing uh, crafting resin, the one that dries in 10 minutes, and equal parts, stirred it up, poured it in the molds. I'm kind of giving you a mock-up here. And these little rosette medallions are absolutely beautiful. The detail, look at the detail in the mold. And when they come out, I'm showing you that there's that lip and it tells you how much to mix up to put in there on the IOD molds. I get my IOD molds, stamps, transfers from Two Chicks Home and Market over Denison, Texas. And she sends them to me when I order. She is amazing. So I'll leave her link in the description box below. If you're a first time, if you're, if you're ordering for the first time from Elsie, she'll give you a 10% discount if you use that link, which is great to get a 10% discount off IOD. So I just used cake batter and I stippled it on. Uh, and I did two coats on there. And now I'm taking this gilding wax. And first I started out with a Q-tip and I thought I was just going to like highlight it with it. Then I decided to take a, a little pointy paintbrush. It's an artist brush. And just go in all the nooks and crannies and cover this completely. I really didn't know. I know what I wanted it to look like. I slowed this down so you could see what in real time how long it took and what it looks like. I did use my fingers on parts of it, but to get down those nooks and crannies, I did use a paintbrush, and I really wanted these to look like medallions. They they are the rosettes, but oh, they turn out so pretty. Just watch. And I kind of just flew by the seat of my pants here. You know how you just keep adding stuff and adding stuff and you wonder if it's actually going to turn out and then in the end you're like, oh, I'm glad I didn't give up. Well, I took the Shipwrecked Wax by DIY to give it that verdigris look and look how pretty they start turn looking. I did take a little white wax and dabbed a little white wax in a few places as well, but I don't think I got that on camera. Now I'm taking my clear wax and I'm going to wax this front, back, sides, seal that paint because DIY paint needs to be sealed with something. Otherwise, when it gets wet or damp or moist, it's going to not hold up because it is a water-based clay mineral paint. Now I had these little strips of fabric and this crocheted lace ribbon and I'm just going to make a little messy bow. I just cut them and laid them down and I'm going to take a piece of, off of this burlap ribbon and I just pulled a little piece off that was fraying and wrapped it around there. The twine was a little too thick for this bow in my opinion for what I was going for and I just tied it in a knot, tied a little bow in the center with that same piece of ribbon and I glued it to the center in the middle. I glued down those medallions right where they are and I just love how this turned out, the Star Spangled Banner. And it just makes me want to sing it. Um, so I think this is absolutely gorgeous. Let me know how you think that these little medallions turned out. 
This DIY is so simple. I'm just spraying this down with some water. I'm using a wet wipe and you will see that I'm just going to keep using a wet wipe and this paint to stain this little scrap block of two by four. I'm going to use this opportunity to talk about the mystery question since you can pretty much tell what I'm doing with this DIY. My mystery question is, did, have you had a family member who has served in the military and also gone to war and served in a war for our country? It's just a yes or no question pretty much, but I would love for you to expound on it. And if your answer is no, that you didn't actually have a family member, maybe you had a friend or um, you knew someone who did, and that's okay. You can put that down in the comments as well. As long as you answer this question, you are going to be entered into the contest to win the Cricut Explore Air 2, which is a great prize. Also, if you get confused, all of the rules and everything will be in the description box below. So be sure and go down there and check that out if everything that I'm saying is not as clear as mud. Okay, let's have fun. This little DIY turned out cute. It was simple, but it was cute. I just decided to hang these little stars by this little uh, tiny thin string that I bought on clearance after Valentine's Day at, I don't even know, Target, I think, or somewhere. And then I just took a little bit of this burlap ribbon and just cut a little piece off and pinched it together in the middle to make a tiny little bow and pinched it up in the middle frayed the ends a little bit and I did end up hot gluing it down a little bit so that it wasn't so floppy and I did hot glue one of those stars down on the back so that they kind of laid how I wanted them to. But I think this to be such a simple little DIY would be so cute on a tiered tray or just add to a little vignette like I did there. Now this I got apricots in. Apricots, apricots, however you guys say it and it it's a great thing to put your paints in. Okay, here's a, a, a visual of all the spindles that I still have left over. These are those long ends that I cut off. And I cut those off to use the spindle, so I have a lot of these laying around. So I cut them, and we're going to make a flag. So I'm, cutting, I'm painting some of them red, some of them white, some of them blue. So you'll just see. Just painting is easy. I'm not going to show you all of that, so we have time to get in more DIYs. So the short ones I'm doing blue because that's going to be in the upper left corner. Just giving them all a good coat. This is the Hey Sailor by DIY and Marquee by DIY. And I want to say this is probably Beadboard by DIY because it looks a little bit more white. And then I have these tiny little reds. They're not red. They're wood. Tiny little wood stars that I got on Amazon for a project a long time ago. And I have a ton of them left over. And they had various sizes too. If I can link that in the description box below, I will find, try to find the link for that. So I'm just going to dab a little bit of white paint on there. And then I'm going to take this weathered wood and a chippy brush and do a tiny little bit of distressing on this. I didn't do a whole lot, but and I only did the blocks that would... No, I think I did all four sides of them. I just did it a little bit. I didn't do it major. And then I did take a sanding block and sand just the edges a little bit. I didn't do it really major, but I did do a little bit. Someone asked me recently if I distressed every project that I made, and I said, um, pretty much. I do like clean lines and, um, you know, beautiful, clean, fresh projects, but I, I do like it to have a little dimension and a little character to it. So this is what I did, and then I clear waxed the whole thing. Every single little block, I clear waxed it because we don't do all this work to have the project not last. And then I'm going to glue all the pieces together. Oh, I used a brush to uh, brush the wax on the longer pieces because it was just easier. And then I took my little rag and wiped down the wax to smooth it out and make sure that it got all over everywhere good and didn't have a lot of excess. Okay. So then I'm taking wood glue and hot glue. The hot glue dries faster. The wood glue last, gives it a stronger hold on this wood. And it worked really good even though it was already painted. You know, we like wood to wood better, but um, this worked really good. So 
I I did this on all the pieces and glued them all together but I'm not going to show you that because it's all redundant and right we want to see more projects and less redundant steps okay then I place my stars where I where I want them and then I take my little detail glue gun by sure bonder which I absolutely love and I just put a little drop of glue and I'm not really being very pedantic about that they're all even and in place because it's rustic and I really fought the the temptation or the desire to put some twine on there but I thought it looked really cute just as is now I went outside and I cut this scrap piece of wood to look like a cutting board now this piece was left over from a project my husband and I did we made a cupcake stand and this piece of wood was really warped once we got the cupcake stand ready to assemble we realized that this piece of wood was really warped so it's been in my little stash of scrap wood for a while because there's only certain projects it would work good on so I took it outside and cut it and it's perfect for this one and so I'm just staining it with some stain I decided to use actually use some stain on this one and I'm using a sponge brush and just gonna stain the front back sides all of it and then I'm gonna take it inside once it's come and I let it dry for probably about four to six hours and I'm gonna measure down however however far I wanted to it to be I'm gonna do that part blue and then I'm gonna put some stripes and then my cousin helped me decide how far the straps needed to be because I wanted them to start red end red just like the flag and I am not good with numbers y'all I am not good with measurements or numbers I want to eyeball everything and I just could not figure it out because it was seven and a quarter inches wide now if it had been eight inches wide now we're gonna make them two inches each that would have been easy but no 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 it was not even even so you know that made it even harder so being the smart intelligent person she is she helped me and so I got it all, you know, drawn out and then taped off. I painted this with the Hay Sailor. Got it painted. I didn't do like really full coverage. I just did one coat because I liked that the wood showed through a little bit. And you'll see in the end why. Now I'm taping off the parts that I don't want red. And then I'm going to use that marquee again. And I'm going to do one coat of marquee. And I'm painting away from that tape because I don't want it to seep under. So I'm pulling the paint away from that tape. I'm trying to really kind of exaggerate it so you can see that I'm pulling away. My hand, my big fat hand's kind of in the way. But anyway, that's what I did. And the good thing about the DIY paint is it's water soluble. So if you make a boo-boo, you can take that wet wipe and just erase it. Now I'm taking all the paint off and look at those lines so you can see there. Okay, now I used my Cricut. Here's the plug for Cricut. Cricut did not sponsor this video, so I didn't feel the need to really do a big Cricut video. But I did cut these little stars out on my Cricut. I tried to do, I didn't want to do a, a sticky stencil because I didn't want it to pull my paint up or take that chance. But I do love to do paper stencils when I'm just going to use it one time like this. And I didn't care even if it bled a little bit because it's so rustic. But I did not get any bleeding. And then I just kept moving my paper around until I got the stars everywhere that I wanted them. You do have to be careful that you don't have any paint on the back side of that paper when you lay it back down. Then I wrapped some twine around here and made my little knot a little bit off-centered. And I had this little solo wood flower. They're not, that's not really what they are, but they come from Dollar Tree. And I just put that on there, and that is that. How simple. And that is it for these DIYs today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every one of you. I hope that you enjoyed all of these DIYs. Please leave me a comment and let me know which was your favorite. And be sure that you hit that subscribe button and the like, the thumbs up, all the good things that help my channel, help my videos, um, help a girl out here. Also, I want you to remember to be still and know that he is God.